this is a video two of 223 in 2023. So our brass is done in the case dryer. We're gonna hop right in here to the meat and potatoes of the brass prep really. But our brass is done in the case dryer. So I like to transport it in you know, a nice container here. Quick step I like to do just to verify it's dry. If you kind of shake, shake your brass and you step there and you just kind of look, you'll just kind of look through. Look through the container. Yeah, so I like to just shake my brass in the container. And then I've had this happen where uh, the brass is not thoroughly dried enough. You'll see dro little droplets fly out. I mean, they're not, you'll, you'll see them. There's none. So this is dry. So let's move on to resizing now. We've got clean, dry brass. So let's go back to the bench. All right, so the next step is resizing where you take this brass and you uh, smush it back to factory dimensions. And you'll see how that works here momentarily. But before you do that, there's a lot of friction in this process. You need what's called case lube, uh, which is a, I use a spray case lube. This is a mixture of liquid lanolin and 99% isopropyl alcohol. The recipe or for the mixture is from the 6-5 guys. Uh, you can find us on Google if you look up 6-5 guys case lube recipe. So I like to just do this in a box. I'll take my brass, take a nice spray bottle and just make sure you spray them all nicely. Uh, don't drench them, but make sure you just get a, a, like a, a thin amount on all the cases. They have a thin uh, lubrication on that side. And then I like these Tupperwares because I can put the lid on and shake it around. Once I shake it around, I like to just run it Run my hand through it and verify that they're all lubricated. So it'll be a little wet because the alcohol hasn't dried yet, but that dries pretty quickly because it's 99%. So let's set up our resizing die while we let these dry for a couple minutes. Here is the die set I use. This is the RCBS 223 Remington 556, of course. Uh, SB stands for small base, and then uh, and then this is for uh, this is referring to the seating die that it has a taper crimp, which we don't use, but that comes up later. We'll talk about that when we see bullets. But resizing, uh, small base dies. Small base dies are ba uh, in a nutshell, they're full length resizing dies that go in a little step, they go a step further and they really push that brass to the minimum of what's called SAMI spec, S-A-A-M-I. Uh, if you care to know the details of SAMI, who they are, basically they regulate ammunition and uh, they establish dimensions so that for factory stuff. But small base resets you back to the minimum of factory. Why do I do this? I reload for semi-autos. I reload for multiple ARs. And uh, so I want my ammunition to work in my BCM and my other ARs and whatever I'll use to train or shoot with. I want it to chamber and run reliably in all of them. So a small base die gives you that. Here's a resizing die with the uh, decapping pin, which removes those spent primers I told you about. And uh, these dies resize and remove the spent primer all in one go. I set up dies according to the instructions that come with it. So it says small base resizing. So uh, I will be following these directions. If you want to pause the video and take a screenshot, just so you have context, or I'll just explain it as we go. But let's set up the die. Let's put our shell holder in. This is the RCBS size 10 uh, for 223 and uh, fits other calibers as well, but it fits 223. So first I'll slide this in, which this is what holds our, our piece of brass as it goes through the die. This is an RCBS rock chucker. It's a single stage press and they're amazing. I recommend it, but uh, anyway, let's get back to it. So this, when I refer to the die, uh, I'll refer to a couple things here. So this is the die body. And then this is what's called, this piece here is called the locking ring. Uh, it has a locking ring screw here, which you use this Allen key to tighten down once you have the die set up. So as per the directions, uh, the ram with the shell holder that I put in earlier needs to be all the way up. So my handle here is all the way down. 
not going anywhere else. And then this is all the way up. So I still have play here because I'm not touching it yet. So I keep screwing it down until this is a die body. I keep screwing until bam, see how it stopped. I encountered that resistance. So then we're the direction say to lower the Ram. So I'm going to lower this back to our default thing. And then it says to from here, add another quarter turn tighter. So in, so clockwise, right? So, okay, let me set this camera up. So here we are. So direction say, so we hit the ramp. So now we're just gonna do a quarter turn to finish the locking process for cam over. So we're gonna turn this a quarter turn, just like that. Okay, quarter turn. Now that we're set according to the directions, we're gonna lock this ring all the way down. First with our finger tight here. Get it nice and tight. Now this step, I have a big wrench just because I don't have a wrench that fits the locking ring size. I just need an adjustable wrench to tighten this, but you're gonna just, just barely, not super intense, do not gorilla torque this, just very lightly Hold the die body and then lock that ring a little more slowly because small base resizing is an intense process and we don't want anything to come unscrewed while we're doing it. So that's all set up according to directions. Take your Allen key and just now we're going to lock our sizing ring. Just it's a brass screw, so do not gorilla torque it again, just nice and tight. And we're done. Our die is set up according to our CBS instructions for a small base resizing. So let's start resizing. We have our die set up nicely. Everything is locked down and snug. Forgot to mention something important with your uh, decapping die. Just make sure that your decapping pin, it'll say in the directions, just make sure it's poking out about that much. And then that is the uh, decapping pin or rod that punches out the spent primer. So make sure that's sticking out a little bit. Forgot to mention that. That's adjusted up there. It's pretty self-explanatory. You just uh, spin this around and then you lock it down with your fingers. And that's that's pretty much it. So small, small detail, but let's get started. So small little detail about that decapping pin, but back to the action. I like to use an Ellie Wilson, uh, oh, I'm not even in the camera. Ellie Wilson case gauge. This is a headspace gauge. And basically this just tells me uh, if the case is resized within Sammy specs. So you'll see like a recessed edge and then a per, like a top edge. There's like a groove here, very, very slight. But basically if the case goes inside this case gauge and fits in between this top ridge, let me get back in the, let me, in the, there we go. This top and this bottom, like this bottom surface and top surface, the case will sit. So I'll show you a fired case for perspective. These have not been resized. They still have the let me put this box up here. Not resized yet. Oh, whoops. Not resized yet and still has the spent primer in it. So if I were to put it in this case gauge, it's obviously going to be out of spec because it was fired. So I'll drop it in there and you can see how it's more felt than seen. But if I angle the camera, yep. You'll see how it pokes out over this top. That means it's too back. big. So case gauge, like I was saying, it pokes out over the top, but we'll fix that. So come over here to our press and resizing is pretty easy. Uh, once you have your thing set up, it's not super difficult. It's really not that bad. You just need to do the work. So put your brass in the shell holder, come all the way up, push it down and pull it back out. Just like that, you have just full length resized to small base a case. Drop in the case gauge, and if I make sure that the camera can catch this, now it is sitting below that surface, and it's sitting just above that second one. So now it's no longer popping out the top, which means that we have resized this down to minimum SAMI spec so that it'll chamber into any properly chambered AR-15. AR that you may have in 5.56 that you want to shoot with. So that's it. You just did one. We'll just start uh, going through the rest of these.
So, just went through all these cases. They've all been resized. And now we're on to the next step. So, this next step is called case trimming, which uh, refers to the length of your case as a whole. So, let me flip to the drawing. This is the Lyman reloading manual. So, here's 250 Remington. And right here, 1.76, that's in inches. So from the base of the case to the case mouth or the end of the neck, 1.76. So that's the max length. Sammy, Sporting Arms, Manufacturing, uh, the board that regulates all the standards for ammunition and, and chambers as well. Uh, their spec for 223 Remington cases is 1.73 to 1.76, which means that any if your case length is between 1.73 to 1.76 inches, then it is in spec to be loaded as 223 Remington. Your reloading manual is going to have a trim to length dimension, which is 1.75. So that's a good dimension to trim to if your cases are too long. A uh, good dimension to trim to as a good, like, this is good middle ground. Uh, and also, I would advise trimming your case to the same length anyway, of course. But... I'm going to explain what I do for trimming and then the next step after trimming would be chamfering and deburring which I will show you once these run through the trimmer what that is. Basically a chamfer, cham a chamfer on your case mouth here around the case mouth ensures that when you seat bullets they have a slight downward angle to feed the, put the bullet into the neck. So it will make sense once you trim but let's set up our case trimmer here and let me get my calipers out. So here's this case length 1.762. So this would need to be trimmed. It's just a hair long. This is actually a little on the shorter end, but uh, so, I mean, it's just a very, it's a mixed bag in there. So as long as our stuff's within Sammy spec, it's good for what we're trying to do, which is reload for an AR. Uh, and you shouldn't really have any ill effects if you're having some, it's good to just trim to the same length as a standardization thing, but generally speaking, you're in that Sammy spec, your trim lengths are good to go. However, uh, I use what's called the Gerard Gerard Manufacturing or Machining GerardTool.com. It's called the Gerard Triway for 223 Remington. And what this does is you set it to trim to a certain length. It's uh, it indexes off the shoulder there, and uh, we're going to set it up here in a drill. You guys will see how it works. And uh, basically, it trims to the length that you set it for, but it also chamfers and deburs. So it does three steps in one. So let me show that to you guys here. Let's set the drill up. So as I was saying, uh, when you're on the workbench here, not on the ground, just with the uh, that we need. So I like to have that same box again. After I trim and chamfer and deburr, I put it in this box, and then we move on to the next step. But basically, this is your Gerud triway, and it's got a 3 8 bit, and it just chucks into really any drill. No, it's 3 8 any standard power drill, this is literally a corded, cheap corded drill off Amazon that I use. It works fantastic. I've done hundreds of rounds with this. I, maybe I've hit a thousand for case prep, but I've done a lot of rounds with this drill. It's corded, so I don't have to charge a battery, and they're really cheap. I think I paid $20 for this on Amazon. So it doesn't have to be fancy, just Something that spins for your Giroud triway. And as I was explaining, this step is after you've finished resizing, so you just resized everything, you do this to ensure that A, your case mouth is chamfered and deburred for easier bullet seating, and B, uh, most importantly, what I meant to say is your, your cases are not too long, and then if they're too short, there's nothing you can do, you just throw them out. Generally speaking, you're gonna after you resize, you're gonna have brat. Most of it's gonna be too long. So let's see what our Giroud triway is set to. So let's see where our Giroud triway is set. I just used it to trim brass, and it was pretty good. Let's just see if it's in the correct ballpark we need it. Remember that Sammy spec is 1.73 to 1.76. I shoot for 1.75 as close as I can get. If I'm a little shorter or a little longer, then it's fine by me. But again, we'll just measure a case again real quick. This guy is 1.762, so that would be too long. So then we'll do the triway, get this up and spinning.
can see it has just chamfered and deburred our case mouth. So that's done. The Drew just handled that, all that for us, so I don't have to do it with a hand tool. And then we measure our length, and we're trimming at 1. 1. 1.747, which is good. That's completely fine by me. That's in that spec, and it's close to 1.75. So this means that cases that are longer than 1.747 will get trimmed. And then even if a case is shorter than that, in my experience, the Giroud, at least, it won't trim them, so they won't go any shorter, but it will chamfer and deburr them for me. So again, I run every single case through the, through the Giroud triway because if it's too long, it'll trim it. And if it's too short, it won't trim it, but it'll give us that chamfer and deburr which we need to see bullets. So. So these cases have just been resized and I just ran all of them through the Drew triway hooked up to a cheapo drill you can get off Amazon or anywhere really I like corded because I use this drill only for this purpose so I don't have to charge any batteries and uh, you can just sit plugged in and go to work but these are all trimmed they've all been chamfered and deburred because the Drew does it all at once and they've been resized so Next step we're gonna have to do is we're gonna tumble them real quick again for about half an hour to get all the lanolin case lube off. And then uh, we'll see the next step. We're almost there to uh, a loaded round, so stick with it.